it's not just that hemp seed and hemp seed foods are good for you for wellness. There really is a tremendous therapeutic potential for diseases such as heart, uh, heart disease, hypertension, kidney disease, diabetes, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, pain <coughs> syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease. And there's a lot of data to support that for omega-3 fatty acids. And it's not just the omega-3 fatty acids that make hemp uh, unique. There's a whole, really, array of macronutrients, micronutrients, trace compounds, and phytochemicals. But first, I want to talk about the nutritional properties of hemp seed and oil. Okay. Um, hemp seed has high biological value protein. Uh, hemp seed is complete protein with all essential amino acids, including arginine and histidine, um, histidine which are essential for growth and development in childhood, and high sulfur-containing amino acids, methionine and cysteine. There are 35 grams of protein in 100 grams of hemp seed, or about 10 grams per ounce, which is really comparable to meat, fish, poultry, dairy, and eggs, having about 7 grams per ounce. What's really critical is that this is an easily digestible, gluten-free protein, which is critical for vegetarians uh, or children with food allergies. But one study that looked at gamma linoleic acid, magnesium, and vitamin D in osteoporosis, which showed increased uh, bone deposition and increased calcium absorption. And all three of those compounds are in hemp seed. Vitamin E and tocopherol uh, content of hemp seed, high antioxidant and anti-carcinogenic co uh, compound and activity. What's interesting is the type of tocopherol that are in hemp seed. Uh, gamma tocopherol, which is uh, much more prevalent in hemp seed than alpha tocopherol, has been studied lately for its anti-carcinogenic properties. Gamma tocopherol is secreted in bile into the intestine and fecal material, where it's believed, and, and studies have shown, that it inhibits lipid peroxidation and the formation of mutagenic peroxidation products, or cancer-causing agents, and that it's able to decrease DNA damage caused by reactive nitrogen oxide species. There's also high calcium, magnesium, and potassium content of hemp seed and oil, and fiber. And um, there's a mix of soluble and insoluble fiber, and that makes this a great uh, compound for bulk forming laxative with the mulsing properties. So also um, softening the stool. And in traditional Chinese medicine, hemp seed is used for just that. Other nutritional properties of hemp seed and oil include the phytosterols. Phytosterols, uh, and there's a whole, we used to think of nutrients just in terms of vitamins, minerals, uh, protein, calories. Now we're really looking at the phyto-Greek plant-based chemicals. There's a whole body of research now looking at phytosterols and their hypolipidemic, antiviral, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory actions. And in hemp seeds, there's 438 milligrams per 100 grams, or three ounces, of hemp seed. Uh, in one study, they looked at the, the ability of phytosterols to decrease cholesterol solubility in the intestinal lumen and compete with cholesterol for uptake. Subjects were given 500 milligrams of dietary cholesterol, which is quite a significant amount because they recommend you uh, taking in no more than 300 milligrams a day, and one gram of beta cytosterol And that showed a 42% decreased cholesterol with very little to toxicity, making beta cytosterol a very attractive option for anti-hyperlipidemic actions. There are also terpenoids, which contribute anti-inflammatory, anti-allergenic, and cytoprotective actions. And we've had a wealth of information on, on cannabidiol and its anti-inflammatory, um, anti-inflammatory, anti-convulsant, anti-epileptic properties. Uh, methyl salicylate also has been studied, um, salicylic, aspirin, uh, salicylic acid from aspirin, and we, there's a clear body of research indicating methyl salicylates, anti-inflammatory analgesic and antipyretic actions. And this is really oil of wintergreen. When we discuss the therapeutic role of essential fatty acids, again, I will mention it's, it's critical not only for growth and development, but in the prevention and treatment of chronic disease, essential fatty acids. So not just for wellness, but really therapeutically. Essential fatty acids have been neglected for many years, and only research, recently has research shifted to recognize their essential role in human health with regards to the ratio of polyunsaturated to fat, saturated fatty acid. More recently, the effects of the research on essential fatty acid has been on gene expression and studying their role in encoding enzyme proteins involved in lipogenesis, glycolysis, glucose transport, cell growth, 
early gene expression, adhesion molecules, inflammation, again, beta oxidation and growth factors. Primary sources of essential fatty acids, uh, linoleic acid and alpha linoleic acid, are plants, plants, plants on land and sea. And of all the conflicting information out there about nutrition that we hear every day, fiber is good for breast cancer, it's not good for breast cancer, beta carotene is good for preventing lung cancer, it's bad for lung cancer if you happen you know, to smoke for 30 years. Of all the conflicting sources of information out there, the one consensus in the research community is that increasing your intake of plant-based foods is protective in reducing the risk of cancer, heart disease, hypertension, osteoporosis, all chronic degenerative diseases across the board. Um, there's no argument that plants are not protective to our organ systems and our cells. The primary source of essential fatty acids are plants, plants on land and in the sea. Uh, and if you're wondering, well, what plants in the sea? Phytoplankton and phytoalgae. How do you think those fish are getting so high in their omega-3 fatty acids? They're not eating other fish, or, well, actually, the bigger fish are eating the littler fish, but the littler fish have to eat something. And they're eating the phytoplankton and the algae. And that's where they're getting essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids' beneficial effects in prevention and management of coronary heart disease, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, renal disease, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, depression, cystic fibrosis, and cancer. I can talk a little bit more about the comparison of the oils. I just want to quickly go through hemp seed versus fish oil. Hemp seed oil does not have the fishy taste, odor, GI distress, and eruption, a fancy word for burping, of fish seed oil. Hemp seed oil, which is rich in natural vitamin E, does not require additional supplementation of vitamin E as fish oil does. And you, have, you can use less capsules and it therefore cost less, which is an issue with many of my patients. Fish oil does have potential contamination with mercury dioxins and PCBs, although a recent study suggested that it's not as much of an issue as it was thought to be. Uh, what have I missed here? Fish oil has been shown to slightly increase LDL, not yet known if hemp seed oil does. And fish oil greater than three grams a day has been seen to show some adverse effects on immunity and that it may suppress T and, um, T and B cell function and decrease the production of cytokines. So really, it's critical to look at uh, the dose response effect in the studies. Hemp seed versus flaxseed oil. Long-term supplementation with flaxseed can cause omega-6 fatty acid deficiency because the omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio is one to five versus the three to one, which is believed to be the optimal. Uh, hemp seed has a three to one ratio and flaxseed has a one to five. So it's actually much higher in omega-3 fatty acids. Long term, you could throw your, the whole physiology the other way. And I'm just about finished here. I have two more slides. Flaxseed oil um, is very controversial. The, the phytoestrogen activity, it's controversial in conditions of estrogen dominance, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, endometriosis, and uterine fibroids. Hemp seed versus soy. Hemp seed is rarely allergenic versus soy's highly allergenic profile. Hemp seed is free of the trypsin inhibitors that impair protein absorption present in soy. And hemp seed is free of the oligosaccharoids that cause GI distress and flatulence, a fancy name for gas, present in soy. I would like to see some studies done with whole foods, like some of the flaxseed studies done using uh, flaxseed flour in muffins versus just the isolated oil. A lot of people have discussed you know, the idea of synergy, there being other compounds in the plant. We just don't want to look at the fatty acids. We'd like to look at the whole, um, the whole profile. And I, I think that, um, oh, I did want to comment on the THC uh, content of foods. This is a political issue, but this is not in any way unique to issues affecting the safety of our food supply. I think there is very little, there's no known toxicity issue. Uh, I don't, uh, there's been no known um, psychoactivity from THC in foods. I think the issue of THC in foodstuffs is mainly political. I would take the THC in foods any day over the pesticides on fruits and vegetables, on the mercury and my food. So I really encourage you to become activists about the, the safety of your food supply. And, and also to think critically that there are naturally occurring toxins in food too, um, in plants that are part of the plant's defense mechanism and many times help us. So uh, I thank you for your time and I thank you for the invitation to speak.